Doosh, doosh, doosh. Aloha everybody, King Kapuka Kapona here. I'm gonna do a quick review of this RC fishing boat that we've had uh, about two or three times we've taken it out at this point. Just enough that I could give a quick review on some of the details of the boat, as well as what I think of the boat. This boat was sent to us by banggood.com. It's a company that sells a bunch of different things online. I'll have a link directly to this boat as well if you decide you wanna check it out. The name of this boat on their website is the, I believe this is pronounced Uru AV 2011-5 generation. So I think that's the 2011-2015 generation 50 centimeter fishing boat. Uh, it's the RC boat, as you can tell. On the website, it says 500 meters remote fishing RC boat. So I'm assuming that's saying that it has about a range of 500 meters. I'll say off the top that from what I experienced, it definitely does not have a range of 500 meters. I'd say it has a comfortable range of about somewhere around 150 meters, somewhere in that range. I didn't actually walk it out. I'd say maybe 200 meters is like, yeah, that's about as far as you wanna go before uh, basically it stops being in range and you gotta kinda walk close to it. I'll include some footage from the time that we began testing this out in this video as well so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, it's, dude, is it good? Whoa! That is so sick. <laughs> sick, dude. How far can you go, I wonder? I don't know. I'm gonna run it like along the shoreline so that way it'll be easy to go and grab. That's so funny, dude. Look at that. <laughs> hey. Yeah, the batteries, dude. It sucks that we... Oh, I see. It's out of range. That's basically maximum effective range right there. That is far, though. That's pretty far, yeah. Is it coming towards us or away? <laughs> Oh, it went out far, bro. It did go out far. All right, I'm bringing it back. The boat itself has a ton of functions that I actually think are really cool and uh, pretty great. So we'll jump into some of those now. Starting, it's waterproof. Gotta be, right? So even the top, if it flipped over, you pour water on it. I just washed it off right now, like the entire thing. So you can see there's a little bit of water, but it isn't able to get into any of the actual electronics so you pop this hatch open and in here is the wiring that leads to the battery which is housed inside of the casing itself when it was sent to me it was sent with the uh, charger that is standard for Europe so luckily I had on hand a similar charger that worked just fine it's a 12 volt charger one of these little round ones I don't actually know what the uh, attachment sizes here so sorry about that guys but most people have one of these laying around they charge things like cameras all kinds of different batteries old cell phones i believe is the same kind of charger so you plug that in attach that you want to keep that unplugged when you're not using it so that the battery doesn't just slowly leach clap that back on and you're set to go the front here has a toggle switch on and off that's on it makes a noise when it turns on off also has a light indicator here to show you how much battery so right now it's basically at full charge i've used this one full time since i charged it last and it's still got a full charge on it so the battery on it's actually pretty solid it lasts more than you're going to need for any standard fishing trip you could probably take it out camping for a few days and get one charge it'd be pretty much good to go on that the main function of this boat or the key like wow factor is these buckets right here basically it allows you to launch bait launch chum launch lines lead whatever you want to use that's controlled by these toggles the controller itself boom flip it up now it's on you have a bunch of different selections here these two controlling the left and right motor this is a dual motor dual action motor so it's not no oh, you notice that let me jump onto something else actually this controller has one thing that I am not stoked about, which is that the battery housing requires a screw to keep it on. It doesn't have any kind of like clasping besides the screw. So if you're not the smartest person, like perhaps me, you're gonna put this all together and clap that on there and not notice that the screw's not in. And you're gonna walk to the beach or wherever you're gonna go, and this is gonna fall off and it's gonna be gone forever like it is for me. I tried to get another one with uh, no success, so if you lose that, you're gonna be bummed out like me. I'm gonna actually create a little piece of cardboard to basically hold this down. So it's not end of the world, really. Right now, if you just hold it, it's cherry too. I've used it now and just had to hold it and it was fine. Back to the uh, motors, I'll jump onto that. We'll jump onto these little boosters on the top. Two 
different actions here. So you got the left and right, forward, back. So the way that this boat is steered is just with these double props. So you're gonna wanna turn right, you're gonna wanna push the left engine forward. That's gonna cause it to start pushing more like this and it's gonna turn like that. Same thing on the right, you wanna use the difference. So if you haven't ever used a, a boat, there's lots of dual prop actual ships and boats out there. It's the same concept as one of those. You use the different props to allow you to turn. So if you wanna do a rapid turn, you can one forward, one back, that'll do a quick one. You wanna go forward, you can just blast forward. The steering's actually pretty good. Uh, I didn't have any troubles trying to get it to steer around for the most part. These engines are replaceable, so although you can't get a cover, there's definitely ways to get new props. I don't know why you'd ever need one. I guess if you burn one out somehow. There are availabilities to get another one of those and change them out on your own. It's just a simple couple screws you take out from what I believe. I haven't done it, but it looks like it's not that hard. Going back to these little dumpers here, you can use them for, again, bait, lines, whatever you want to do. Um, I was using it just to throw out some lead and chum. So I'll put chum, throw out a piece of lead with my line so it brings my line out really far farther than I'd normally be able to cast. Boop, pop it open, then maybe I'll throw some chum as well next to it, you know, whatever you want to do. Anyway, these little dumpers here are controlled with these bottom toggles, left and right, pretty simple. So you want to launch one, you get it out there, you grab this button, you pull it to the left, boom, launches it out. Same thing, the right one, time to launch, launches it out. It's actually really cool uh, and works really well. And the angle, the way they have it designed, everything comes out, nothing really gets stuck from what I've experienced. It's spring actuated, there's some springs on the back right there, so resetting it, it's easy. Lock them back down, good to go. It's actually a ton of fun, <laughs> it's pretty cool. You can see when you pop these, a little solenoid pulls these little levers in and out, and it, uh, which ties into these, pulls it, hit it, goes in, comes back out. It's really cool, easy, works well. This thing on here, I put this on there myself just to get some more GoPro footage while I'm on the ocean. Does not come with this, so don't expect yours to have a sick little mount, but you can throw one on there really easily. The boat itself has multiple engine speeds which are controlled by these toggles here next to the joysticks. Pushing them up increases the engine speed, pushing them down decreases it. Pretty simple stuff right there. If you're out there and you notice you're pushing them both forward and it might be like drifting, it's because you got your engine speed set differently. So you can toggle them each like all the way down or all the way up and then you'll line up and then you can just kind of keep track of what speed you got it going at. When I was using it, I had a constant the wind coming in, so I just turned one engine up a little bit and then held them both forward and it steered it like properly for me. It kind of did a, its own little steering thing. So there are functions for having that there. Maybe you want to go slow or you just want to turbo it out there. Either way, you can make it happen. So the last cool little function that I want to point out is these LED lights on the front and the back. They're controlled with these toggles on the left and the right of the controller. Hit the left one, and they begin to flash. So you got two LEDs on the back, and then the one stronger white LED on the front. So if you're doing something at night, you're on a lake, you're on the ocean, you wanna be able to track this thing and not lose it, pretty sick function to have. You have the option now of being able to use this at night if you so desire, without it 100% being lost. Because if this thing was jet black with no lights and you put it in the water and it went three feet away you would lose it for sure right one you toggle that sorry i gotta cram my batteries back in there you toggle that and it's a constant shine so instead of the flashing it's just always on this thing provides a little bit of forward light but i wouldn't trust it to steer all that much it's mainly there to keep track of where it's pointing so if you see this white light you know it's pointing at you and then you have the two ones in the back to kind of have an idea of where the base is and where it's pointing i think that's a pretty cool function that they basically made it so you can use this thing at night or in the daytime. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the funnest part. So uh, the range itself, I said it was about maybe 200 meters, 150 safe, something around that range. I didn't get to measure it out, but it was decently far. I was impressed. This antenna 
on the controller itself is pretty short and it does not seem to have an easy capability of being changed out. Whereas the one on the boat itself, it's got the screw and that standard kind of little pin there. So you could change that one out to a better one if you so desired. However, the controller itself, I don't believe there's any easy way to change that out. Perhaps you could take it all the way apart and it might be able to be changed on the inside. But I haven't tried that and I don't think I'm going to. So you gotta keep that in mind. The controller itself, I think this is probably the limiting factor on the range, is the uh, short stub on the controller. Um, I believe you could probably get a different controller and sync it up to whatever the frequency of this is. I am not educated enough in the subject to do that myself, so I'm just rocking it with the normal controller. It is what it is. Wasn't bad though. I was satisfied with how far it went. I didn't need it to go 500 meters. I'm not trying to launch lines out quite that far. Um, where it went was more than enough for me. Getting into the actual functionality of this guy here, it basically works quite well. It's quicker than I imagined, with the exception of there being wind. If there is wind that is above a slight breeze, yeah, you're gonna struggle. It's actually extremely light. It's got this handle on here to carry it, and it's really lighter than I imagined. It's, you know, it's hefty, maybe about four pounds, but it's not super solid. But the trade-off of not being heavy, you get more speed for your thrust, but it also drifts all over the place if there's any wind. That is quadruply a factor once you launch these guys. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong one. Launch these guys. Now you have these two big sails on the back of your boat, basically. So you're trying to drive this thing around. It's got some resistance going forward and you have what has now become two giant sails on the back of your boat. There's no way to automatically put these back down. So you launch them and they're launched while they're out there. You're not gonna have it come back down and be slightly more aerodynamic. So if you're using this, you gotta kinda target days when the wind is just not nuts. Like we brought the first day we brought it out, it was windy and the wind was just dominating it. Luckily it was an onshore wind, so it wasn't the end of the world. Oh no, it wasn't, it was an offshore wind, so it was kind of a struggle now that I think about it. But we got it back in and that was actually fairly gusty and it still managed to come back in. So I was stoked that the battery lasted the whole time. It still was on like full charge when I got it back in. And it was strong enough to come back in even with a substantial wind. We're in Hawaii here and the wind can get pretty nuts and that day it was definitely starting to touch on the little too nuts category. What I did, instead of coming just head on into the wind, I just jigged back and forth and we got it back into the shore just fine. It just took a little longer. <laughs> but the same thing, I got it out there and I launched these little things on the back and then suddenly the wind was like, okay, yeah, I'll see you later. And I was like, oh no. And end of the day, don't use it in any wind that's above a moderate breeze. Um, unless it's onshore, then, you know, it's just gonna help your boat come back in. If it's offshore, don't take it farther than you'd want to swim. I'm not sure on the current price point of this right now. I will look online while editing and I'll post it right up here. Here's the current price. You can check it out again. I'll have a link in the description for that. So other than those two, issues one of which was pretty much my own fault i didn't put the screw into the back here and the other one is the wind that just kind of bullies this thing around other than those it's actually pretty sick rc boat in my opinion i haven't owned a bunch of them but i'm satisfied with this one it's pretty cool it works well this thing these launchers are super prime like i don't have any issues with them they're strong they launch things pretty dang far and it doesn't get caught up on anything in there the engines are great. It goes faster than I imagined. Uh, so yeah, so just with the exception of the controller, I'd say, which has this little stubby baby one, the range is pretty dang good. Not 500 meters, that's for sure, at least in my opinion. I don't know, maybe on like a perfectly smooth lake, you might get much farther than what we were doing because we had some waves, a little bit of chop, so that, you know, that's gonna affect your range. I'm stoked on it, we're gonna keep using it. We have plan on going out again pretty soon. It was the winter when I got this, and in Hawaii, that's the time that the waves are really big and the storms are coming and the wind's all up. So now it's summertime, and I'm gonna to get to be able to use this on some glassy mornings when it's just calm and beautiful and really get some proper use out of this thing. Other than that, I hope this helped you guys out in learning a little bit more about this boat here. Uh, maybe a little bit more information if you're searching into boats on what you want to look for. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer those. Any suggestions, same thing, drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until the next one. Doosh, doosh, doosh.